Hi guys, welcome to this coronavirus tutorial for the B-Wing helmet. Would love to introduce you to this new helmet. This is one of my favorite buckets. It's not seen on film in Return of the Jedi, but they made a whole slew of these for the movie. And it's a very unusual helmet. So let me take you through the parts. You've got two vacuform shells, left and right. You've got your visor frame, your clear visor, laser cut um, side frames for the visor frame and a bunch of greeblies. So I am going to solve this kit stage by stage. We're going to start with joining the left and right vacuform halves. You can see on these shells really clearly where to trim. Just look for that defined edge. And on the back you can see exactly where to trim just on those lines right there. I'm not going to finish this cut straight onto that edge. I'm going to get really close and then finish those edges on a belt sander. When you're using the belt sander, it's a good idea to look on the inside surface. You can see in a little more detail where that trim line is. For some of these edges that are a little more squared off, I like to switch to my Dremel. And then you can deburr all those edges with a little sheet of sandpaper. Here's our fit. Now you're never going to have a perfect, perfect fit. We're going to be gluing this from the inside and bondoing from the inside and outside. So this will all blend, but I'm pretty satisfied with that fit right there. That's, that's pretty good. It's pretty tight. Now don't worry about the top edge. The top edge might not line up. I had to over trim a little bit. Um, a little bit on the bottom, a little bit on the top. That bondo stage will take care of that very quickly. This is really, really important. These two marks on my bench are five and a half, just a little bit over five and a half inches wide. That is how wide you want the cheeks apart. That does not sound right, but you want these spread apart at five and a half inches from the inside edge. That's just a little bit more. My first time when I built was a tiny bit tight, so I'm gonna go a little bit proud of five and a half, something like this. So when you join that back, make sure that these aren't further apart Unless you have a really gigantic head, and you don't want to make them inside that mark right there. I tacked these two shells together off camera using extra thick super glue spray kicker. So basically I put a bead of super glue on one side, I spray kicked the other, held them together. As you can see, it's not perfect because I was holding this apart at about five and a half, but it is good enough for our next step. This will all disappear in the next 15 minutes or so. Across the seam. Just kind of get it held really tight. Then what we're doing is, oops, I don't want tape in there. What we're doing is applying Bondo to that inside edge. Just in case I need to sand any of this top edge flush, I want to go very generous with the Bondo on those flat edges. Just in case we need to shave down that styrene a little bit to get it flush. Here's a trick that I've been doing for years, although I don't think I've ever shown this in a tutorial, a video tutorial. 
I'm using OD regular clear PVC cement and this Bondo has only been on here for about five minutes or so so it's still a little bit tacky which is what you want and I'm going to liberally spread this PVC cement where the Bondo joins the styrene anywhere that that Bondo is touching the styrene this just gives it an extra extra strong adhesion boost this PVC cement dries pretty quickly and once it does you've got a really really strong bond there's a little bit of a bridge that has to happen here with the Bondo so I'm gonna go in a little bit thicker at the bottom and top edge just to bridge that little bit of a difference Sixty grit sanding sponge will take care of these contours. The seam line has completely disappeared. I'm going to give this a little bit of a polish with a thousand grit paper, and we are ready to paint. Before we paint this, we need to slot the little openings for the chin strap and I'm slotting those from the inside and then we also need to slot this groove here I'm doing that with my cutoff wheel I'm cleaning up these slots with a little file. If you overcut these slots, which is really easy to do, just make some Bondo, patch it in there, file it, you're good to go. Here's our fully assembled shell for the B-Wing helmet. We've got the two vacuform shells joined, bondoed. Um, it's been reinforced in the back. I've got the slots cut out for the straps and we are ready to start painting. Now we are doing blue five, this one here. So what I'll be masking off is this blue area and the back has a stripe. All, all of these have this back stripe in common. And where'd you go? So here I'm believing that this is a dark gray stripe in the back. There it is, masked off for dark gray and blue. The back strip of this helmet is standard procedure, medium gray Tamiya. Before I go further on this helmet, I'm going to spray it all down with matte clear. This just seals all the paint in place. And if you have any goofs up, goof ups on the next steps, you can always wipe that paint straight off and go again. Okay, here we are. I've painted in that black rectangle. I've painted in all the black slots on both sides. And now it is time for decals. This guy goes here on the cheek and then these two these series of three black bars go on the top 
like this. I won't go into detail on how to apply these decals. I will link my Y-Wing helmet tutorial. And that goes into extreme detail on how to apply these. But suffice it to say, you just press down these decals onto the transfer tape, remove it, get it lined up, and press them down. Let's address these detail pieces, greebles. These guys, I'm going to paint silver, duplicolor chrome, and then these are going to be a very dark gray. I don't want to go black. I don't like, I don't like the final color of black on a helmet. I like to start with a dark gray. So that's what we're doing is a dark gray on these pieces. To detail this medallion, this little round guy goes in the center and the crosses are like this mustardy gold color. And then when this is dry, I'm going to go ahead and touch over these little rivet pieces in silver again. This is just like the Y-Wing helmet. I think I'll link that in the video description. A tiny little piston inside this. This little black knob here. This four little knob guy there. On this side, the medallion with the cross pointed up, right in the middle. This brick over here to the angle. The other little Lego bricky piece about there. And this little knob right there. Here's a little side note. The, the Greeblies come with two of these piston sizes. A small one and one that's a little bit bigger. You can see the size difference. So I ended up using the larger piston for Blue 5. I'm going to be weathering this in a couple different ways, but the first stage of weathering is going to be using a wash. I've got a dark brown mix here brown, a little bit of black. This is acrylic, so I'm using a lot of water. You can also do this with oil paints. And I'm just going to come in here. I'm not going to mess with the silver parts. I want to weather those with um, airbrush techniques. But I'm going to come in here for the rest of this. All the white areas. Inside here a little bit. And this is a very lightly weathered helmet. I don't want to go too crazy. As a matter of fact, this paint might be a little bit aggressive, so I might water it down a little bit more. But I'm just going to do this for the whole helmet. Stage one of filtering this guy. These helmets are detailed with a lot of cabling and wires, and there's zip ties, there's all kinds of stuff in this. So I'll be doing most of this off camera. But I've got some just scrap black cable, white cable, I've got some zip ties, I've got some heavier tubing. I've got this stretchy USB cable. This was like uh, four bucks on Amazon. And I notice on Blue 5, he's got a white one. And some of the others probably have black ones. Not really sure because we don't know what the other ones look like on the opposite side. Don't know. So I'll be doing this off camera, just kind of getting these in place. The kit also comes with this little clip. You can see it right there on Blue 5. It's also on Blue Leader. It's kind of hiding behind the visor there. And I imagine this clip is probably a part of these other guys too. So what I did is I just straightened out the stem and super glued it so I've got a nice stiff thing here. And it looks like that will be popping out of here somewhere, probably about here. It's kind of sticking out. Alright, here we are so far. None of these cables have been weathered. This white will no longer be white after I bring the airbrush out. But you can see I've got that cable running there. I've got my clip popping out right there. Cables are connecting back into the back. And then on the other side, I've got 
Nothing is tidied up yet. There will be uh, zip ties tying this along the side a little bit tighter, but I've got a cable there, a cable there. It's all coming down. And I can't do any more until we get the leather trim and the visor ready. I'll be creating the outer perimeter leather trim using this faux leather. This is a laser cut piece of, of faux leather and this tubing and Spray 77 for a really detailed look at how that's done. Check the link in the description for the Y-Wing tutorial and I go over that step in great detail. One thing about the leather trim on these helmets is they're really quite bright. They're really vibrant. They're almost orange. So I've mixed up orange with a little bit of brown, tame it down just a little bit, and you can see I've already started on this end. Just going to give it a little more saturation of that orange color, just to make these pop. Okay, here we are. We've got the leather trim super glued in place. Lines across the bottom and over the top. I've got my cables all here ready. To install the zip ties, I drilled a small little hole, grabbed a file, just kind of filed it a little bit wider, and I can slip my zip ties right in there. So I've got this one that's holding that there. I've got another one around here that's, that's tightening that up here. The cables come down. There's another zip tie here, and I think there's another one in the back. I've got a mix of very dark gray, not black, just a very dark gray. And I'm going to come in here and start to get serious with some of the scorching and some of the overall tonage. I might come in and define some of these areas a little bit more. I might come in and make these silver pistons not look so new. Definitely want to come into this cord, kind of move things around here a little bit so I can get in there. Make that look a little bit older. Feels like it needs a little bit of shading here. Maybe a little blast here. Turn my nozzle down, my air pressure down, and do a little bit of a little bit of black spatter. Anyone that knows my work knows that I'm a big fan of scratching these helmets, physically scratching them, so that you've got the white that shows through the scratch and then when you touch it it's got texture it feels like a real piece of battle damage so I, I don't know if this is screen accurate or not like I said we don't know what the back of this helmet looks like but I'm going to introduce some battle damage just by using this flat head screwdriver and just scratching in little nicks You can see how much that adds. I mean, that really, that really adds a lot. I like to go into these corners sometimes, just kind of chip it away. I think I might come in with a little bit of black on a stick and put it on these edges, wherever these edges are going to be bumping a lot. Bottom edge, this top edge, these corners. Probably have a little black scuff marks. We're in the middle of this coronavirus outbreak and it's really hard to find white elastic. 
I'm pretty sure that's what they use for the chin strap. So instead, I am using black webbing. I have a lot of this on hand. So it's two inch black webbing. Inch and a half would be way better because I had to trim it down, uh, trim the edges a little bit to fit inside those cheek slots, and then there's a little black centerpiece. And that is your chin strap. The webbing is painted white, and it's a bit of a tan color on these film used versions. It's kind of creamy. So I'm going to tint these webbing pieces with ivory silk just to give it a little bit of a warm tone after this white. Let's move on to the visor and the visor frame. This is your vacuform piece that's the outer frame for the visor. Then you've got a clear piece of PETG vacuformed. These have trace lines on them. So when you trace these guys out, you will end up with your frame and your inner clear piece. So we're going to uh, get this frame to be a metallic red color. And I'll be showing you how to get the clear visor slightly yellow. Just a little bit yellow. Here's our visor frame. This was sprayed just with regular old duplicolor chrome. It's actually pretty remarkably shiny. So this is our base. We need this to be a kind of a, a very shiny, crimsony color. And what I found is another duplicolor product, anodized coating color coat. This is just a red anodizing coat couple of light coats. I'm really far away. I'm just going to tint it. Probably take about three coats of this. Here's the visor frame. I adjusted that inside lip to have a curve now inside here. So this kit will ship with the updated pattern. These are those pieces of laser cut plastic. I had to trim them just a little bit to get them to, to work right. So they will each be gluing onto the sides of the frame here. Yellow paint and really, 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 really get this thing saturated down with ISO. Very thin, translucent. And I'm just barely going to kiss the inside of this with this yellow mix. Barely. And that's probably enough. I just barely have that yellow. If you hold it up against white, you'll see there's a little bit of a yellow tint. And that's all we need to do. Now that we have our slightly stained clear visor, I'm going to be epoxying the outer frame to this, and I'm only doing it on the ends, not on the middle, because this whole thing needs to flex going in. It has to flex, so I'm only epoxying here and here, very ends. And two cover plate screws per side. We're also bringing this down to the final details, so the microphone stem is going to attach here. Pretty long, but that's what it does. It comes just like this.
Okay, that is it. Blue 5 reproduction helmet of a production helmet that wasn't actually used in production, but many were made. And this one is Blue 5. I've got more tutorials coming on Blue Leader. And the other helmets are all being made currently. So you'll get to see samples of all the others. But this was a tough one because it involves a, a visor frame and a clear tinted visor. And let me show you a little bit more of this detail. Really happy with how this helmet turned out. I mean, I'm so disappointed these weren't seen on film. But this is going into the collection of all my flight helmets. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial for Blue 5 B-Wing Helmet. Make sure you click on the description to check out the website, Instagram, and Facebook pages. And go learn about how this was made from scratch. Thanks for watching.